or send balls and things like that for my message, I think. Let me ask you something. We are now continuing the season of Easter, season of resurrection. I don't have a bag to be able to have mystery items in to ask you if, I th- if you think there's something in there or not. You don't have to even answer aloud if you don't want to. There's a lot of things that we could be doubting and perhaps we even doubt as we look around the world right now. But I wonder, do we truly believe that Love conquers hate. Do we truly believe that light can overcome the darkness? Do we truly believe that people, including ourselves, can change and become new creations in Christ? Do we believe that a church this size can truly make a difference in the community around us? Do we believe that that whole line about no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome? I would imagine if you are like me, somewhere in those things that I just asked you, there might be, I don't know, a little bit of a doubt on at least one of them. That's not to say that they're not all true. I think they are. I believe they are. But there are times that I look around and I need more convincing sometimes than others. I truly believe in the resurrection. And I truly believe that life overcomes death. And I truly do believe that churches this size can continue to make a difference in the communities around them. Just show up this afternoon. And watch the folks that are hungry not only for food, but companionship and relationship. And you will see the power of the resurrection and new opportunities and new beginnings taking place. Do you believe that someone with a troubled past who perhaps didn't make always the greatest of decisions, can change. Perhaps that's yourself or someone you know. Do you believe that even in the most frustrating of times when folks don't seem to take words of advice the way we think they should, Do you think those folks are still lovable and loved? Could be someone you know, could be ourselves. There certainly is within those few verses that were shared and that Terry shared with the children, the part about doubting. But there was also that part, these are the very last words in the Gospel of Matthew. That was read. This is post-resurrection. The disciples, I am sure, were probably either cowering in place or just absolutely stunned and confused about what to do next. And I don't blame them. 
when you think life is supposed to be going a certain way, and all of a sudden things are turned upside down, you certainly begin to doubt a lot of things. So I think it's fitting that the very end of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus appears in a holy space to those 11 that remain. And tells them that things are not over. Things are not done. They are not finished with that which they had all started. Here's the thing I know that Jesus didn't say, at least according to the scriptures. Jesus did not say, sit in place, and they will come to you, those who are seeking. Jesus did not say, it's okay, you've done what you can do, stand pat. What I hear in the gospel to those 11 that were probably doubting and fearful and unsure of what in the world was going to happen next, in our gospel, in those verses, what we hear is Jesus saying in the midst of everything else that's going on, you have heard heard what I have taught. You have seen how I have lived and how I have loved. You have followed me all the way to this point. I now say you need to continue to go and do. Don't sit and wait. Now there's different interpretations on what it means to go out and baptize folks in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. There are some churches that believe that commission is to go out and to knock on doors and to hand out pamphlets, and I'm not going to knock that because I will tell you they are at least going out, going? going out and doing something, right? May not be where I am theologically on some stuff, but they at least get up and they go out and they do. Church, as we move forward in this Easter season, as we move forward in this time of transition, as we are trying to determine who we are, who we are being called to be, the one thing I am assured of is we are not called to sit and to wait. The Easter message, the gospel message is that we are to take the good news of Christ as we have felt it, as we have experienced it, and we are to go out and to share that with everyone we encounter. We are to go out and we are to invite people in to share a meal that we're going to have downstairs. We are invited to go out and to seek those who are hurting and provide comfort. We are called to be a people of faith, a family of love for those who are hurting. Could be us. Could be someone we know. Could be someone who comes we've never met before. Here's the other thing I know for sure. This church, even as we struggle at times, even as we get on each other's nerves at... Oh, no, that's a different church, not this church. Even as we may get frustrated with one another on certain things. Here is something I can tell you in the six months that I have been here. And I say this in love. You took in someone who was born into this church, who left, explored life, may have explored life differently than some of you may have chosen to explore life, returned back, perhaps made decisions you would not have made, and you loved and you helped, and you supported, and you made a difference. 
That much I can assure you I know is true because I have watched it for the last six months. Even at times when it's frustrating. Even in times when it's challenging. And in those moments, I hear the gospel message say, go and do. Go and love. You have done that with one of your own. I have also watched you over the six months welcome folks in for the very first time in love on them as well. My invitation, my Easter invitation to each and every one of us is simply this. We don't stop. We continue to go and make disciples. If you feel the urge to go out and pass out pamphlets and tracts, see me. We'll talk about it. Maybe that's your calling. And if that's the case, i got some suggestions on what things you might want to pass out door to door and what things you may not. But perhaps, rather than passing out pamphlets and tracts about talking about how Jesus is risen, Perhaps you have ideas of your own on how we go out and we show and live into the power of the resurrection and new life and new beginnings full of grace and goodness and love. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed and Christ continues to be risen every time we go and we do and we make disciples in Christ's name. May we continue to do that 